Why aren't you using the pen I got you for Christmas? What's wrong with this one? It's like six months old. Newer is always better. So you're saying the new Star Wars are better than the old ones? Yes. Yes, I am. Then, Dad, you are not my father. That's not true! That's impossible! This video is going to be about how to use Canon T-Series cameras, so the T5, T6, T7, for video. In order to shoot video on a Canon T-Series camera like this T6, you got to spin the mode dial to the video camera. And as you notice, it'll switch to the LCD screen or live view mode because we can't use the viewfinder to film with this camera. To toggle through menus and settings, you have to use the physical buttons on the camera, like the menu button down here that has our main menu options in it, uh, and the Q button up here, which is your quick menu that has a bunch of quick video settings in it. And when we hit the display button, we actually change the information that we view on the screen. So right now we're just seeing the image. If we hit display, we can see our exposure settings down here. If we hit it again, we see a smaller version of that quick menu. And then finally we see everything, including a histogram. The highest resolution this camera records in is full HD 1080p at 30 or 24 frames per second. In order to change that, you go into menu and you go into the second menu, movie record size. And as you can see, besides filming at 30 and 24 frames per second at 1080, it films at 720p at 60 frames per second for action or if you want to put something in slow-mo and 480p at 30 frames per second if you want to film in 1996 mode or make VHS copies. You can also change your movie record size by going into the quick menu and then going to the third one from the bottom and then you can just pick whichever one you want. Well, the Canon T3 only had auto exposure, the Canon T5, T6, etc. all give us the option to choose between auto and manual exposure. To choose between auto and manual exposure, we go into the menu to the very first menu at the very, very top. Here we see we can choose between auto and manual. In auto exposure, the camera will adjust aperture, shutter speed, and ISO automatically. So if you're filming and the light in your scene changes, the camera will adjust accordingly. However, we can still control how our camera reacts by going into exposure compensation. Here, if we go to the left, it'll expose the image to be darker, and if we go to the right, it'll expose the image to be brighter. On automatic, you can see that as I open the door, the camera adjusted for the change in exposure automatically, but it was quite jarring. In manual, it was really dark on the outside, but as I open the fridge door, it looks nice because I manually adjusted the settings to be exposed for the light on the inside. When you switch to manual exposure, you're now in control of shutter speed, aperture, and ISO yourself. In order to help you dial in your exposure, if you hit display, there'll be an exposure meter that shows up at the bottom of the LCD screen. If you don't see the little line that shows up, just push your shutter button down part way and it'll show up. If you notice, if we go to the right, it'll get brighter. If we go to the left, it'll get darker. Getting the line at zero is not always best. It always depends on the look you're going for. To emphasize this, I filmed my son in front of a window. First, exposing for the shadows or lights on the inside, Second, exposing for the highlights or the light from the window. Which do you prefer? When I expose an image, I typically start with my shutter speed first, then I'll go to aperture, and then I'll use ISO to really get the level that I want. Shutter speed is indicated by the bottom left number here, which is 30. To change it, all you have to do is scroll with your index finger. However, for video, you really want to keep it at double your frame rate. So if we go into the Q menu, and we see here that we're filming at 24 frames per second. Well, we want it to be as close to double that as possible. So that would be 50 in this case. If you were in here and you're filming at 30 frames per second, then you'd want to crank this up to 60. There are a few exceptions to this rule though. Like in low light, it's okay to go down to 30. And in daylight, it's okay to crank it if you want to maintain a shallow depth of field. Having said that, ND filters are a better solution. Next, we have aperture. Aperture controls how much light enters the camera through the lens. Aperture is indicated as the second number on our screen here, right now at 1.8. We can change it by simply pushing down the AV plus minus button here and scrolling with our index finger. The lower the number or wider the aperture, the more light that reaches the camera sensor, not only making the image brighter, but creating a shallower depth of field or blurrier out of focus areas. 
So if you want to blur your background, make sure your aperture is lower. If you want everything to be in focus, make sure it's higher. If you only have the 18 to 55 kit lens that comes with the camera, the lowest your aperture can go is f3.5 when zoomed out and f5.6 when zoomed in. If you want a lens with a lower aperture, I suggest the Canon 50mm f1.8. It's a great value lens and it's the one I'm using on the T6 for this video. Then there's ISO. ISO controls how sensitive your camera's sensor is to light. To change ISO, you can push the camera's flash button, which will bring up the menu, or you can use the Q button or quick menu at the very bottom, which will also bring up the menu. As you can see, the higher the ISO, the brighter the image. However, it's best to keep it as low as possible because the higher you go, the more noise is added to the image. I'd say 1600 is okay, 3200 is starting to push it, and 6400, I'd only use that in emergency low light situations because as you can see, the image has really fallen apart. While the Canon T6 does not have continuous autofocus, it does have some autofocus options. Located in the first menu, second one down, there's three autofocus choices, Flexi Zone AF, Live Mode, and Quick Mode. In Flexi Zone AF, you move this box around with a control pad until you get it to the spot where you want the camera to focus. When you have it where you want it, Hold down the shutter button part way while the camera hunts back and forth to acquire focus. When the box turns green, it means the object is in focus and you're ready to film. If your object is too close or it doesn't have enough contrast, then the camera will have trouble focusing. Our second autofocus option is live mode. In this mode, the camera is supposed to automatically find and track faces with the box. When you're satisfied with the box's location, follow the same steps as the last mode to achieve focus. Note though, if your subject moves, the camera will lose focus despite the box still tracking the subject. As a result, you'll need to reacquire focus by holding down the shutter release once again. If your subject moves while recording, you will also lose focus. The final autofocus option is quick mode. In quick mode, when you hold down the shutter, the camera will switch to the viewfinder to find focus. This mode comes in handy when you're in direct sunlight and you might have trouble seeing the LCD screen. In most cases, however, manual focus is still the best way to go. To find focus manually, I make the image blurry on purpose, then I start spinning the outer ring until I think I have it in focus, then I keep going a little bit to make it blurry, and then I'll spin it back the other way to come back to get it into focus. If you're having trouble seeing if you're in focus on the LCD screen, you can click this little magnifying button here and it'll punch in five times to wherever the box is. Or you can punch it in again to make it 10 times. Then get your focus and then hit the button and it'll go back to normal and then you're ready to record. In manual, you can also do something called rack focusing where you go from being focused on one object to being focused on another. As far as audio goes for this camera, the main thing that you need to know is that it does not have an external mic jack. The camera's audio settings can be found in the menu, in the second menu, the second thing down. And as you can see, we have the choice between auto, manual, and disable, if you ever wanna have no audio at all. If we go into auto, you can see that there's really not much we can change. Record level is darkened out there, but we do see the audio levels appearing at the bottom here. If we go to manual, however, we can now control the record levels. So if you hit set, you can turn your record level down or you can turn it up. This is the audio test on automatic. This is the audio test on manual at a quarter. This is the audio test on manual at a half. This is the audio test on manual at three quarters. This is the audio test on manual at a full. Where's the wind? This is an audio test with the wind filter disabled. This is an audio test with the wind filter enabled. Do you notice any difference? So for best results, put the camera on manual about halfway. Make sure you're talking close to the camera and stay out of the wind. White balance is how you adjust the camera to account for different color temperatures of light that you might encounter. To change the white balance in video, we actually use the Q button and it's the second one from the top. Right now, that's automatic white balance. When we go into the menu, we can see that there's a bunch of presets like daylight, shade, cloudy, tungsten light, white fluorescent, flash, 
and custom. And then even in automatic white balance, if you hit display, there's automatic white balance ambience priority and white priority. If you pick an appropriate preset, then your image is gonna look good. So your colors are gonna look accurate. If you pick like, let's say an outdoor setting and you're filming inside, your image is gonna look a little more yellow. If you pick an indoor setting and you're filming outside, your image is gonna look a little more blue. As for picture styles, they're basically camera filters. Each one gives the image a different look. You can find picture styles in the menu, in the third menu at the bottom. As you can see, there's auto, standard, portrait, etc. And to be honest, most of them look very similar, except for maybe monochrome, which turns everything black and white. But each of these can actually be customized as well. So if you hit display, we can change their sharpness, their contrast, their saturation, and their color tone. All you have to do is hit set, and then you can change it along this meter here. If you've changed everything too much and you're like, I wanted to just be back to neutral, then go down to default set and you can see everything go back to the way that it was. Here's an example in standard with contrast and saturation pumped up. These settings will make the image look nice right out of camera. This one is an example of standard with contrast and saturation turned all the way down. These are probably the settings you'd go with if you want to do some image grading in post-production. You can also change your picture styles in the quick menu right here. And finally, some other camera features that you might want to know about are grid display, which we have the choice of off, grid one, which is your typical rule of thirds grid, and grid two, which is the mega grid. I don't actually know its name. Off looks like this with no lines, grid one looks like this, and grid two looks like this. These grids are meant to help you compose your shot. Another basic feature to know about is obviously the playback. So hit this play button down here, and then you can click through your images one by one or scroll through 10 at a time up here. When you wanna watch one of your videos, you just hit set and this little menu will come up to either play it, go in slow motion or go to the first frame, you know, whatever. And when you're ready, you just hit set on play to watch it. If you wanna know more information about your video clips, you can also hit display which at the bottom here will show your movie size you recorded in and frame rate. If you hit display again, it'll show even more information, including your white balance and your picture style, ISO, and a histogram. If you hit display again, it'll show you both histograms, your exposure histogram and your color histogram. If you wanna get back to the regular, just seeing the whole image, then hit display one more time and it'll go back. All right, so that's everything you need to know about using Canon T-Series cameras for video. If you want more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you next time.